take a look at yourself in the mirror. Just look at yourself. You're down, sad, and bored. And you'd give anything for the Hunting Quest podcast to be on tonight. It's it's going to be okay. We've got good news. You're listening to the Wednesday edition of The Hunting Quest. We like hunting and fishing, and you like hunting and fishing. We love anything outdoors, and so do you. Kayaking, hiking, camping, and you want useful and helpful information on the fishing environment locally in the DMV area. Wednesdays will never be the same. Ah, this is The Hunting Quest, and this is your host, Mike Tippin. All right. And we're back. We are. I like the new intro. I do too. It's sick. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to come on. Oh, really? Yeah, he wants to come on. Oh, that's sick. His voice is going to yeah. sound so cool. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Sorry about that. Still got the cough. I do. Um, it's been horrible. So, but uh, that's, I guess that's the first one we kind of need to address is, you know, tell everybody. Uh, sorry. We're very sorry. <laughs> and, sorry, uh, guys. We've been away for a little <laughs> bit. And it's not because we haven't wanted to, but uh, your ass decided that you're going to get COVID. Yep. I decided to get COVID and then went on vacation. And right, then you got sick. Yeah, I went to NWTF and caught the crud down there, and uh, it's a great time. But actually, I didn't catch it down there. I caught it like the day I came back. Yeah, well, and that's what scared me because I had COVID, and I was worried that you know it was right after we got back from uh, Harrisburg. Yeah, and I was like, God, I hope none of the other guys catch it. Like, I hope it's not. But nobody else, Travis, none of them were sick. I don't Dude, know where I got it. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, man, it's uh. It, it's no joke, man. I, I like I said, I've, I've had this since NWTF, and that was two weeks ago. So, I I can't kick this little cough, but you know, all in all, it's I'm I'm glad I'm a little bit better. Yeah, hell yeah. But uh, how was how was NWTF, dude? That was one of the coolest experiences I think I've ever done in my life. I will definitely definitely go back. So, is um, it better than Harrisburg? It's different. Different? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's got a lot of similarities. Uh, we ran into some of the same people that were, you know, up at uh, NWTF. Um, Kathy from uh, the Tula and all of those folks from, mm-hmm. the, you know, we saw a lot of the same faces. Um, but we saw a lot of new folks. I mean, it is definitely wild turkey focused. That's awesome. So, yeah, we, we, man, we met so many cool people. Um, but Bally, you know, my wife, she went with me. And, man, we just had a blast. Nashville's fun. Um, the Opryland is even cooler. Uh, that, that place is just massively huge. Uh, but there were vendors. There were... Everybody. We saw the guys from Hunt Public. We saw uh, Bruce Mitchell from you know the Swamp People. Mm-hmm. Met him. He's actually going to come on the podcast. That's going to be really cool. That's going to be exciting. Yeah, um, and he is a hundred miles an hour all the time. <laughs> um, we met. Oh, uh, one of the cool things that I was actually able to kind of one of the people we ran into. Um, you'll see over there. There's a gun case. Um, it's a hundred percent waterproof and it's a part of a system. So they call it, you know, it's stackable. Um, so it comes with a pack and the whole thing's called Rockman, R O K M A N. Uh, we did an interview with them uh, and I feel terrible because I've been sick ever since we came back and I've got so much content <laughs> that I've got to get through and I just haven't, um, and when you feel bad, you just, you know, you sit down and you start doing, you know, editing content is just murderous to begin yeah. with. But when you feel bad, it's like, God, man, this is just horrible. Yeah, that was me all of uh, 
but two weeks ago trying to save that audio from Harrisburg. <laughs> uh, and it's so upsetting that none of that is coming out. Um, yeah. You know, I I have a pretty good grasp of <laughs> the way that stuff's supposed to look in a analyzer, and it was <laughs> Yeah, you sent me some not, pictures. That's not good. Not good. Um, so, so that was from the Great American Outdoors, right? Yes. Yep, from up in yeah. Harrisburg. Yeah, well, we tried to do a little bit better. Um, I bought a new shotgun mic for the camera. It sounds pretty good, but there was so many people there. Yeah. You know, we got an interview with Sitka, um, and it was how'd that go? Oh, dude, it was so cool. Um, their new stuff uh, that they've got out. They've got a turkey vest out that is just the bomb, mm-hmm. and the other thing that I thought was really cool and the part that they wanted to really, you know. It, you know, that I asked them about and they wanted to show was this new, um, I guess, line of clothing that they have coming out is actually bug resistant. The Equinox stuff. Yes. I actually have the full set. I have the pants and the top to that system. It, it, and is it I, worth it? so it, when I initially looked at it, I, Last year, I needed all new stuff to turkey hunting because I didn't have any of my stuff up here in Maryland. It's all back home in Missouri. And with the discount, it's uh, for that price, you're only paying a little bit more to get a Sitka brand product, which I've never had any issues with any of their stuff. It's always been it's it's always just top of the line. There's the little details in it that just make sense. Yep. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy it. I bought the pants, bought the top. And last year, I turkey hunted just about every day of the Maryland season last year. I did not have a single tick the entire season. My buddy that I hunted with, and, you know, him and I are sitting on oak trees 15 feet from each other every morning. He, you know, we go every morning. He had two to three ticks every single day. Yeah. I'd never found a single tick on me. I didn't have mosquito bites. I didn't have any of it. And, so, I, you know, at first I was like, oh, that's the first, like, week. I was like, oh, you know, it's kind of weird that I haven't run into any <coughs> ticks yet. And then when he started texting me, like, hey, man, I found two ticks on my way home, you know, in my truck. I felt them crawling on me. He's like, check yourself when you get home. Yep. That's a good thing, by, like, by the, the way. second weekend, I was like, huh, maybe there's a little... Yeah. a little bit to this stuff. I'm I'm yeah. buying into it a little more. And I, I swear by it 100%. I love it. The guy who I was talking to, he talked about that. And he was like, yeah, the one thing that people don't talk about up here that is very prevalent down south, and it is here. People just don't know what they are. Chiggers. Oh, my God. I freaking <laughs> They're the them. worst. They are the worst. You I, thought a mos- I, you, yeah, you thought a mosquito bite was bad. Dude, Go walk through and a field and get chiggers all over your legs. Ever. Ever, ever. So that was like his opening statement was, yeah, we prevent chiggers. And I'm like, I'm sold. I don't care what it takes. Yep. I'm sold. <laughs> yeah. Um, I seem like every year I wind up with some, you know, some chiggers from turkey season. Mm-hmm. So, well, uh, and especially with the ticks, you know, all those bugs carry diseases, oh, Lyme yeah. disease, all that yep. stuff. And I mean, turkey season, you're running around, sitting in the woods yep. for hours. The odds, yep. you're stacking the odds in their favor at that point. I, Absolutely. I'm going to do a little and bit to take care of myself at that point. So I'll kind of let you know, one of the, the the people that we bought this house from, the guy, um, he actually had something that was called Starry. And it comes from a particular tick called the Lone Star Tick. And if you've ever seen them, they're these ticks. The females have this little white dot on their back. Okay. Um. And so he wound up with this thing called Starry. And Starry basically makes you allergic to meat and milk. Huh? Yeah, all red meat. Oh, my yeah. God. And milk. Oh, my God. That's like yeah. 90% of my diet. Exactly. <laughs> so I mean, meat and milk. Oh, and my God. It's no. like not just like you're a little bit allergic. It's like in certain circumstances, it's like anaphylaxis. Holy crap. Yeah. Oh my so, god, that'd be scary. Yeah. Get a tick and bite, not think thing. anything of it, and wake up the next day and Oh yep. my god. And they don't know, you know, like some people just like they get over it in like seven, eight years. And some people live with it the rest of their lives. Oh my god. But I, the question is, is how do you test that? 
Yeah, All right. it's been about seven years. Let me try this red meat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> How do you ever yeah. go back to it? Yeah. Oh. I don't know, man. Yeah, that's terrifying. I didn't know that. See, now I'm even more glad I got my Equinox yeah. stuff. <laughs> so I I love the Equinox oh. stuff. Um, I I I'm definitely gonna try to you know get us a, a good set of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then their turkey vest is. Their turkey Freaking vest is amazing. next level. Yep. That's the one I was telling you about before we started recording. That's I, yeah. I got to get mine ordered. I got a couple of weeks coming until season starts. Yes. Yeah. And like I, I, I've hunted with a lot of different ones, you know, Tidewee, Alps, you know, um, you name it. Mossy Oak's got their stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've hunted with a lot of different vests and some of them with like built in chair seats and all this other stuff. And I'm, thinking this this one is probably next i mean it, i haven't used it so i can't tell you for sure right but looking at it feeling it messing with it all the pockets everything it is like anything else that you would think sit could put out there mm-hmm. it is perfect yeah I mean, I say, yeah it goes back to every sick product i've ever had my hands on it's so yep. thought out and it's just the little details that put them miles ahead of everyone else yep i i now I'm fan- you got me fangirling over here about Sitka. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> um, fit, uh, look, I, when you find a product, and and I even told the guy this when when I did the interview, I was like, you know, you're predominantly thought of in the like in the duck, you know, duck and goose, you know, wild, mm-hmm. you know, that industry. That that's kind of the world that you broke into. And they said, yep, and we're going to take over the rest, right? And you know, honestly, I've, I've got a lot of their stuff, you know, they're, you know, my wife hunts in the incinerator stuff and it's amazing. She's in like four below and sweating. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. Well, and I like there too. I, I mean, you've seen me, I wear their, uh, the timber pattern for everything. Yep. I wear it duck hunting. It blends in good with the blinds when we have them brushed up, standing up against a tree, any of that stuff, duck hunting. Yep. And I wore it last year and hunted uh, deer at this little piece of public land down the road from my house. And I got out late after work. I was just t- took my muzzle loader out, went and sat on the ground in this field. And I had this little six pointer walk. He wasn't 20 feet from me, <laughs> just grazing through the field, walked. I'm sitting in like a point of these woods and he walked right down the edge of me. Nice. Never once even looked at me. Of course not. You know, everyone's like, oh, it's not a deer hunting camo. You can't, you can't use that everywhere. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I got you. I'm sitting over here looking like a little dark bush. Ain't, dude, yeah. you can, that stuff hides anywhere. Right. And, and the, I guess the concept of camouflage is, you know, you go back and you look when, like, my granddad was, well, was hunting. He didn't go out and camouflage. He wore you know, some dark colored clothes that look right. like leaves and went out and killed deer, mm-hmm. killed turkeys, killed it all, right? Um, does the right camouflage give you an advantage? For sure. I think it does. But more importantly, I think from a usefulness and a capability, uh, there's not another product out there from a Sitka perspective. And they're not sponsoring us. So, no. you know, <laughs> uh, there's not I a wish. product out there that I think is well engineered, a- as well as engineered for a specific type of hunting. So, Correct. you know, if you're yep. turkey hunting or you're duck hunting or you're you know, tree stand hunting or you're spot and stalk or whatever it might be, they put a lot of thought into every part of their camouflage. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a fan. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we talked to them. It was really, really cool. And like I said, we got some good content there. And I feel terrible because, um, you know, they're, I was so looking forward to their interview, but I have been so sick. You know, I haven't been able to get it up on YouTube and get our content out there. Um, same thing with Rockman. You know, you look over there and you'll see you know, that, that that gun case. They gave that to me. Um, we did a great interview with them. And I, I'm telling you now, their stuff is, number one, it's the only 100% waterproof backpack that I have found. I mean, like, so does that, legitimately submersible. So that case clips onto a backpack? Yep. Uh- uh-huh it's that's modular pretty slick that's um, slick and i mean the the frame on this thing is all carbon fiber for the backpack oh nice. i wish i had one I, I got it on video and he did a great demo with it mm-hmm. um but the the frame is completely carbon fiber 
uh, it, it flexes. So like the aluminum frames are really cool, but they don't flex. And if they right. do, you're pretty much screwed. Slam them you know, down on point, something, just they're going to snap or bend or, yep. right. And this thing doesn't do it. Uh, everything is 100% waterproof, submersible waterproof. Damn. And it weighs, you know, I've got a forlorn and mm -hmm. it makes that forlorn look like it's uh, some cheap piece of crap. <laughs> and, and I like my forlorn. Yeah. I mean, but it's the same price point. Wow. Actually, it's a little bit cheaper. Wow. Yeah. Where are they located? Uh, they are Idaho. Idaho. That yeah. tracks. <laughs> um, yeah. And the guy, you know, I spoke to the owner, and he's just a freaking awesome guy. I mean, just super, super nice. Um, his booth was really, really cool. And, I mean, they had a tank set up. It's not like they were kind of BSing it. Had a water tank set up. You could dunk them the whole nine yards That's and sweet. it was it was awesome so i feel terrible for the guy because you know he <laughs> gave me that with the intent of like you know putting stuff out on social media and i just haven't had a chance to do it so um that's where it's at we can play catch up yeah <laughs> um let's see what else do we see down there um we ran into a taxidermist and we'll put more out on that uh him and his girlfriend or his fiance were uh, just absolutely amazing. The their taxidermy. He had a full sandhill crane. Oh yes, I've never seen a full body sandhill oh, crane I want mounted one so bad. It was awesome. Yeah, they're so and nobody sick. does it because no. of how hard it is. Yeah, and they're and huge. Yeah, <laughs> beside the point, they're freaking yep. massive. Yep. <laughs> so, oh man. Uh, that caught my attention immediately. Yeah. He's, he was like, yeah, I, I would rather do Sandhill Cranes than anything else. Really? Yeah. So we talked to him and his wife, you know, uh, fiance, you know, we talked to them and um, that was really cool. And we talked to Van Hale, mm -hmm. um, who is a phenomenal guy and he wants to come on the podcast. So um, it, for folks who don't know who Van Hale is, he is, the premier outfitter in Arizona and New Mexico. I, I know I talk about Dan Adler and Diamond Outfitters, but um, uh, Van Hale is you know right up there. Not not only that, but like if you were ever like in a bar fight and you wanted you could pick like one person, <laughs> it would be him. I mean, he's just that that guy. Uh, you know, I don't know if he could fight or not, but I I want him on my side. He'd try anyway. Yeah. Uh, He's a bad, he, he, he's a super nice guy, but you know, he just super cool, real chill. Um, just an awesome guy. So he's going to come on here too, you know, and, uh, he's, he's pretty excited about that. So awesome. we made a lot of contacts and a lot of, um, really cool people met Nina outdoors. Um, she was super cool. Um, her and my wife kind of hit it off and it was really awesome. Awesome. So, Yeah. So we got a whole, bunch a, cool of, place. a whole bunch of people in the pipeline to get on the show. Mm. We're going to have some, some yeah, fun. Yeah, Allie's got up. our calendar booked. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. So um, pretty excited about that now that we've got this um, this kind of stuff figured out. We're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> eh, it only took us an hour <laughs> uh, two. So uh, we got it, though. Yeah, we figured it out eventually. And then um, obviously Catfish and Lacey. Um, but I want to do them in person, so that's yeah. going to be cool. Yeah, that'd be but, fun. So a lot to look forward to. I'm excited. I'm ready yeah. to get this year kicked off. Me too. I, Fishing season's around the corner. I'm ready. Turkey to season. This. Yes. When does it open in Maryland? Uh, April 18th. Right. I think it runs through the 23rd of May. All right, but you have a split season like Virginia, right? Um, it runs all the way through, but they do, um, it's sunrise until noon, I think until May 9th and then May 10th through the end of the season is sunrise to sunset. Um, right. so they don't, there's no pause days in between that I'm aware of. I think it runs yeah. all the way through, but they do change the, uh, the times. Like yeah, Virginia through. does the same thing, but they break it up into like spring one and spring two. Okay. Yeah, so the April 8th through the 23rd, you can hunt um, sunrise to noon. And then the 24th of April through the 14th of May, 
You can hunt sunrise to sunset. April 8th. Yeah, the 8th is when it opens oh. and closes on May 14th. Got a month. One yeah. month. Oh, that gets yeah. me excited. So um, hopefully we're going to be out um, shooting some turkeys. I got an invite from uh, a really, really cool guy who's we're going to get on here. Oh, are you keeping um, this a secret from me? No, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm excited to get him on. He's going to be yeah, super okay. excited about that. I am too. Uh, get him a little liquored up, man. You oh, he's going to be a good happen. time. <laughs> um, so he is going to come on, and he is a turkey killing machine. Mm-hmm. Um, but what's funny is I've never hunted in the valley where he's at. Right. So I'm kind of like I'm actually really, really, really super stoked. Um. I don't know. It's it's weird. It, you know, I, I get that way whenever I've never like hunted in a particular yeah. area and you've always wanted to. It's fun to chase them in different environments. Yeah. It's cool. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. Uh, I got a buddy that lives up in Northern Maryland that wants me to come out um, and hunt with him up in the mountains up there. And he was showing me around this trail that he had made up into this mountain range up there. And <laughs> he had walked like, it was something ridiculous. Like, Two and a half miles, but it was like 4,000 feet of elevation change. Ooh. And I was like, mm, I don't know about all that, nope. dude. I was like, that's that's not a walk. That is a hike. Yeah. <laughs> You're climbing a mountain. Yeah. Uh, um, but I, but oh, still, it would suck, I, but it'd be really fun. So along the same lines, I wanted to tell you about somebody who I ran into. All right. And it was at NWTF. It's... um. A place that the the company's called uh, Hunt Forty Nine, okay. and Hunt Forty Nine is really really cool. Um, why I think it's really cool, I mean, it's got good and bad points, right? Mm-hmm. And and here's why: the good point is, is this guy went through and researched basically all the laws in forty nine states, because obviously there's no turkeys in in Alaska, so. Right. 49 states, and he put them on a website. So if you're hunting in a particular area, you can go and look at your state, like Rhode Island, and say this is what the hunting laws are for Rhode Island for hunting a turkey. Now, I think it's amazing. Yeah, that's really nice that it's all in one centralized spot. And we, we talked with him and his daughter. His daughter actually finished her slam, and that was super cool we that got that on awesome. yeah we talked with her on that um but um we kind of you know again it's on content stuff right mm-hmm. sorry about that <laughs> um so the neat thing you know again they put all the laws in the right place the problem is is that they put all the laws in one place <laughs> i got no reason to like <laughs> Not say I didn't know. Uh, um, but, yeah, they're, they were phenomenal. Um, you know, Hunt 49, they were very, very nice to us. They, they gave us time for an interview. Um, they, their, their product is amazing. You know, people need to definitely go check that out. I, I've, you know, I don't sit here and, and tout products all the time, but I mm-hmm. thought that was really, really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Especially considering, you know, like you and I both hunt in different states. Mm-hmm it's nice to know what state has what, so you're not getting in trouble. Right. Goodness gracious. Because Virginia, even Virginia has a limit on um, how small of a shot size you can use, don't they? You can only use down to seven? Seven. Seven, yeah. See, Maryland, there's no restriction. Yep. Which, Uh, if I... Same thing. Really? I didn't know that. You can't shoot smaller than a seven. Huh. See, yep. I never knew that because up until this year, I always shot Longbeard XR5s. Yep. Um, but I started shooting that heavy TSS, that heavy 18. Yep. Number nine shot. Yeah. Ooh, That's some bad stuff God. right there, man. That is nasty. Oh, yeah. But um, but well, for $75 a box, for five of them, be. they better be. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and my my question is, and, and I've, I've – you know, I'm going to ask, I'm going to send it in, you know, to uh, Missouri and a couple of these other places and see the response I get back. But 
you know, like Migra mm -hmm. has a mix. Mm -hmm. They'll shoot a, you know, 7.9. Right. Um, heavy tungsten, right? So if I'm shooting 7.9 tungsten, I'm shooting sevens, but does it make it illegal because it's mixed with nines? I don't know. I exactly. would think I would think that some of those laws are going to start changing here soon with the way that Dude, shells are developing. It, yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I, I mean, mean, I get it. If you're going to hunt lead, uh, you know why you're doing that. Right. I, I don't there understand. Should, why. There should be an exception for yeah. the TSS stuff because I mean, I, I, dude, I have never seen that bird I shot last year. I have never seen a turkey so stone cold yep. dead when I clicked that trigger yep. as that bird last year to the point oh, where. Yeah. I pulled the trigger and looked and was like, huh. <laughs> I knew it patterned good, but I didn't think it'd do that. Yep. Was like, golly. The head sitting over here and the rest of the turkey sitting there, over it, there. I mean, it didn't flop, kick, no. scratch, nothing. It Stone cold dead. Done. Yeah, cool. I was expecting to watch it. You know, I was sitting up on this ridge. I was expecting it to, you know, flop or run a few yep. steps down the ridge. And I was like, oh, shit. That's going to suck. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So we're gonna hunt it we're gonna hunt together this year? Dude, I'm so down. I've right, already told I already up. told you before we started, I'm planning on taking that first week off work. I know. Uh, I'm I think the last time we recorded, you asked me if I was tired of duck season yet yep. or wanted it back, and I said no. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to be back out doing something. Yep, I figured. I can't take it. Yeah, you it's don't nice. Like that. It's nice for a couple weeks. Sleep yep. in on the weekend every once in a yep. while, but every once in a while. Now I'm ready to, uh, which I don't know why. I don't know why I'm so excited to go back to being cold and wet and miserable. It's the life it's, that you there's live. There's just my friend. something about it. Yeah, there's that. But yeah, I, I imagine like you got a girlfriend, so I imagine your girlfriend's probably happy to have you home for a little while. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then there's some days that she's like, "Is it duck season yet? Can you leave? Right. Go away. <laughs> Can you just leave? I got just leave me do. alone. Go to Travis's house. <laughs> right. Travis. Travis. <laughs> um, speaking of which, um, he's we're gonna have to get him on here. Um, we are. Yeah. Bow season. You know, bow fishing's coming up. So that's that gonna should be, cool. be uh, yeah, end of this month. Start end of this next month. month. Yeah. As soon as that water temp temperature starts coming up. Yeah, snakeheads start rolling in. Oh, yeah. Get them when Catfish, they're nice and slow, head. sitting in that cold water. God, yeah. that's fun. Did, when I, when did you go out with him last year? Spring. Spring. No, no um, summer, and we went, what, one, two, three, four times. Okay. And it the I think the first time we went out was, like, late summer. Okay. Um. We did. I mean, the snakeheads. We saw like one snakehead mm -hmm. um, because it was. I mean, early season, and I didn't get to go out in like November time frame to right. bow fish with them. So, um, but uh, yeah, when we went out, we we fished the Akaquan, mm -hmm. I think, and then we went to the James River. Okay, and then back to the Akaquan, and then I think we did the rest of them were all Akaquan. Gotcha. Yeah, we so. uh, last year was the first year that I worked. Um, I worked a lot more on the boat last year, just mating with uh, Nick. And before that, I would gone down in years past and helped Travis in the middle of the summer or whatever. Or he had a free spot and he's like, hey, come down and fish. Like, All right. But last year was the first year that I was in on the like peak snakehead times. Yeah. Dude, that night in October. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's heard. crazy. I mean, you shoot the snakeheads in the summertime. If that first arrow misses, they're gone. Yeah. You don't get a second shot at them. Right. Dude, these guys in October are shooting like boom, 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 miss. And they're still, the fish is like, uh, what was that? No way. And they're just three yard layup shots on just bah! Oh, it's so cool to watch. Ah, so fun to be, be awesome. out there. Seeing the look on people's faces when they stick that big snake head and it starts taking off and shaking around, it is yeah. awesome. Dude, I, I tell everybody this, you know, the first time I ever went bow fishing, like when I, you know, I went out with Travis, I'd done it when I was a kid, but mm -hmm. like we were using like real bows and shooting, like <laughs> we were just stupid. Um, but uh, we went out with Travis and 
we're sitting out there having a great time and he picks us up at like seven and we're trying to miss a storm and you know it was all this other stuff going on and Lindsay was with him sorry um trying not to cough i got the mute button ready to go <laughs> so, um but uh we went out as me and ally Lindsay, and him and i shot one fish the whole damn night mm-hmm. and i was like okay this is hard i'm all in yeah you know it, it is not easy um and i tell people you know i i kind of like had to tell myself and you know people ask me well how was it you know bow fishing i was like look you got to suck at something before you get better right you know if, if you're just naturally good at it it's not as challenging you're probably not going to be as interested right this one's got me all in right well that's what makes it special yeah you know that's it's everything that's yeah. I, I feel like that's everything in life yep i went back out on uh the james and we smoked like 14 of them <laughs> A second time out, we smoked like 14 of them. Uh, that's awesome. So, you know, I was like, all right, we're getting better. Yeah. It takes so. a while. I remember the first, like, three, I think, like, the first three trips I went out, I didn't shoot a single fish. Yeah. And it was pissing me off. Yep. I was so mad. And, uh, and I mean, you know Travis. He doesn't talk. He doesn't lie. I don't yep. know that I've ever heard Travis tell a lie once. Nah. And I've taken shots at three or four fish that he says were state records, if not very close. Sure. And missed. Oh, yeah. And like. No pressure. Yeah. When <laughs> Travis is like, hey, don't aim, just react. It's a just reaction react. shot. Yep. And then Travis calls you to the bow and goes, aim at this fish. Do not miss it. Yeah. And you're like, what? No oh, pressure. Okay, whatever. Thunk, miss. And he goes. <sighs> yep. And walks to the back of the boat. And you're like, what, dude? It was a carp. Like, I don't know. Cool. Oh, yeah, that was a big fish. Whatever. And he's like, you don't realize how big that fish was, right? And you're like, ah, oh, shit. Yep. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. But that's the the drive that keeps you going back to it. That's it. Because you never know when you're gonna run across that monster catfish or monster carp just cruising the flats. That's it. That's awesome. And um, I know that Allie and um, uh, Mark when we were out. They shot at a catfish, and I kid you not, they hit it and it bounced off of them. Mm -hmm. I, the my roommate catfish did that. I think I've ever seen. I took my huge. roommate out, and he did the same exact thing. He shot and hit right on the forehead, and you could see yeah. the arrow go thunk and bounce yep. off and fall into the water, and the fish just turn, swim away. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> I I sat there and I'm like, oh my god, this is insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're um, nuts. And then, you know, sometimes you hit them just right, you know, and it's yeah. like, all right, they're dead. You know, before you even pull them in a boat, they're dead. Mm -hmm. I said, so. I remember the first one I ever shot with a bow. We're coming back into the marina, and I just happened to see this catfish, like, come out from the side of the boat. And I was just, like, bored. We're in the no-wake zone, so we're just idling in. We weren't yep. even, nobody else even had their bows in their hand. I'm just standing, I was like, hmm, thunk, and stuck it. Yep. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's the one that I hit? And this catfish, yep. I kid you not, was that big. Of course. I'm like, really? Yep. I'm missing three foot layup shots on 30 pound channel cats, but I hit yep. this thing as we're <laughs> moving under big power <laughs> and it's taken off on the side of the boat. That's the one oh. I stick. I'm like, this is stupid. That's <laughs> awesome. It's so fun. Dude, we had, uh, had such a good time, man. And um, it's what's really cool is um, my cousin, she takes her kids out for. Um, like a senior trip, mm -hmm. but it's when their junior's becoming a senior. Okay. Right? Not when they graduate. It's like when their junior is becoming a senior, she takes them out and uh, she called me up and she goes, Hey, you know, I know you hunt and I know you fish. Um, uh, my son, Jared is wanting to, you know, go hunt and fish. He you know, wants to go fishing mm -hmm. uh, for a senior trip. That's all he wants to do. What, you know, w what should I do? And I'm like, I got you. <laughs> um, so they're going to come up. And we're gonna put them on. Uh, we're gonna put them on the boat and uh, take them fishing. Uh, bow fish. He's never bow fish before. Oh, uh, that'll be fun. So that's gonna be cool. And then we're gonna take them down to Shenandoah. Um, you know, obviously that's the number two smallmouth in the country. So right. you know, you you cannot beat that fishing. When are we going fishing there, Mikey? When you take anytime you want to go, man. <laughs> I'm, Let's I'm go. all in. I've never um, caught a smallmouth either. Are you kidding me? Never once, dude. What the hell? 
Never once. So I I am such a fan of the the Shenandoah. I, I didn't. I'm, I'm not from here. I'm not raised in Virginia. Mm-hmm. You know, the Shenandoah Valley is not in my blood like most people who are from here, right? But man, I tell you what. Number one, the river travels south to north, so that screws you up. Whoa, completely <laughs> screws you up. Yeah, that'd be confusing. Yeah. Um. So you start in like Front Royal, and you wind up like heading towards like Harper's Ferry. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> You're like. Dude, that I'm, this is supposed to be on that side, right? Yeah. No, Once that, you get past that, yeah, you just realize I got a fish. Yeah, dude, it is killer. Oh, that's awesome. And if you get tired of catching smallies, or maybe you're you know the smallies aren't on the bike possible. yet. Uh, it's not, but I'm just saying. <laughs> um, the largemouth are monstrous there. Um, run a you know a cool Ned rig something like mm-hmm. that. Jesus, man, you just crush them. Um, crankbaits, you know, uh, dude, anything. I mean, it's it's so cool. Um, and the fish are just amazing, especially when it warms up a little bit and you've mm-hmm. got some good water underneath you. Yeah. God almighty, they're amazing. Oh, and then when you get tired of all of now. that, throw some, you know, old dead freaking shrimp on your hook and catch some catfish that are just monsters. <laughs> so, yeah, man. I got it all. I got I got my bass rods here. I got my little trout crappie rods. I got a catfish rod. I got a deep sea rod. I got everything. Dude. We're ready to go. We can go anytime you want. Let's do it. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've got uh, the one thing that I'll tell you, though, is like I don't take my kayaks to um, the Shenandoah. Mm-hmm. I rent somebody else's and beat the hell out of them. Yeah. Yeah. I love my kayaks. I'm not taking them back down the Shenandoah. <laughs> I mean, it is that is destructive on a freaking kayak. Really? <laughs> yeah, they the it gets so shallow in places. Even when the water's good, I mean, mm-hmm. like three foot at the Shenandoah, you're still gonna scrub bottom. Really? Oh yeah, there's spots in there that I mean, it's it's it, when the water levels are low, huh. don't even give it a shot. Never would have thought that. Yeah, uh, you got to really pay attention to that. So dry days, dry you know, dry weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, just not, not worth it. Not worth. Not it. trying to go down there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's it's amazing. Um, go rent a kayak. It's you know like fifty bucks. Right. We got a good you know good group of people that we go or a good outfitter that we go with. Yeah. Um, hell, they got overnights now. Really? You go down there and spend the night, and then keep on going. So <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, just to bring your truck down there, we'll sleep in that under that flated. Oh, that, that's right. I Dude, love it. I saw that little time lapse. That was sweet. Oh, did you? Yeah. I like it. it I like it a slick. lot. It looked a I'm hell a of a lot easier than that deck box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um it looked a lot lighter and a lot easier. Box, we would have had something there too. I don't know that anybody would want to see that time lapse. There was a, <laughs> a lot, lot of, of cussing. There was a lot of cussing and throwing stuff and Yep. But that's what happens when you do it by yourself. Well, that's yeah, right. I get it. Yeah, that 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 flated uh Oh, so they're going to be on um, Shark Tank. Really? Yeah. I huh. think it's today. I, I don't sure. watch TV, so I don't know when Shark Tank comes on, but yeah. it's like this week. Huh. That's sweet. Yeah. Um, so I'm, a, I'm, I'm totally sold on this thing, man. I love it. it. I put sweet. it on my truck. It's been up there for a week. I've been driving it around 70 miles an hour. You don't even notice it's back there. That's great. Yeah. And, every, and believe it or not, it's actually quieter. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. Like, you huh. don't hear wind noise. You don't hear anything. Like, it, like it's crazy. I love it. I'm all in. That's sweet. That's yeah, that's awesome. the best purchase, I think, that, uh, that, <laughs> that I've Best purchase at Harrisburg or all yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd say it's probably one of the best Up ones there? of all time. That's awesome. By far. That's cool. So, and it took me, like, I don't know, like 15 minutes to, like, air the whole thing up. And then my neighbor's kids came over and they jumped on top of it and had a good time. <laughs> so, Mikey's got a uh, new trampoline. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so that's awesome. Um, but yeah, there's a there's some good places. You know, I know my wife's ain't itching to get out there and go fishing too, so she's a big kayak fisher, and um, she wants to hit Orange Lake this year, and she's got a list of all the places she wants to try to go. And um, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun, man. Oh yeah, fishing season's almost here. Oh, crap. 
so close uh, to that time we can get back out and start enjoying nice weather, hopefully. But, dude, honestly, we haven't had that bad of weather. Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I woke up the other day and went outside. My windshield was frozen before I was trying to go to work, and that uh, that kind of put me in a bad mood that morning. I was not ready for that. I I could understand that. I could. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's uh, I don't know. It's, it's like the sad trombone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. They, uh, it, it, I don't know. It, it, it's cool. I, I, I like the, I like that we haven't had like this massively cold winter, but I love snow. Yep. Same. So, I don't know, man. It, it, it is what it is. Um, hopefully that's not going to lead to a whole lot of really bad freaking, uh, like bugs and ticks right. and all that stuff this season. Yeah, which, eh, Who knows? Eh, you know, <laughs> probably will, but eh, whatever. It is what it is. You got that Equinox stuff on. You'll be all right. Not yet. You do. Yeah, that's right. I'm working <laughs> on it. So if Guidefitter would uh, pick up Sitka again, I'd, I'd be all in it. But uh, I don't think they're on Sitka anymore. No, nope, I don't think they are. So, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're probably getting close to the end, aren't we? Yeah, we're a little bit over, actually. But All right. Well, like, man, you're the timekeeper, man. You're supposed to stop me. I thought you were setting a timer, Mikey. I forgot. Ah. Actually, yeah. I think I put it on my phone, but I never hit start. I did. <laughs> Just sitting there with 30 minutes. Um, uh, but, yeah, so we've got um, a lot going on. You know, we've got Hunt 49. Um, I, again, folks need to go check them out. You know, turkey season is right here. You know, in certain places, it's going to be here before you know it. Uh, go check out Hunt 49. Make sure you know the rules and regulations before you get out there so you don't get tickets. Nobody likes getting tickets. They get expensive. Um, but, uh, you know, that's the, (laughs) (laughs) um, but no, um, so check out hunt 49, um, the Sika Equinox stuff in their turkey vest is badass. Yep. Um, look, check out YouTube. We're going to, hopefully I'll finish up some of this content and that's going to be really cool. We'll be able to get that knocked out and you can see all the stuff from NWTF. Uh, I put a little bit of the stuff up at uh, Instagram as much as I could. Um, and then I kind of, like I said, I just didn't feel good. So, But on the men. It's the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> right on. All right, man. Um, we're going to do Friday, right? Yeah, we'll do Friday. Um, I think we have some one, maybe two, that want to come on Friday, unless you two. have other words. Yeah, thank you. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited about that one. I think that'll be That's fun. That's going to be cool. So, right on, guys. Well, All right. we'll see you Friday. Well, everybody have a good one. We'll see you later. Take somebody punting and fishing and uh, get outside. Right on. See you guys. Bye, everybody. You've been listening to The Hunting Quest, the Wednesday edition. Another hour of the best talk about hunting and fishing. Another hour to get tips and to learn something. We're so pumped about the new hour. Make sure to like, rate, and review it. And pass it around to your friends so they know that we're on on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. To get in touch with the show, you can fire an email to info at thehuntingquest.com. And you can check us out on Instagram and YouTube at The Hunting Quest. Making your Wednesday night complete, this has been The Hunting Quest.